So we've added some things to our set and I showed you order doesn't matter. The order I added them does not correspond to the order that they're stored in and order is actually a word you should not be even thinking about. However, we're about to go through and look at one element at a time. How do we do that? Well, if you had an ordered data structure that uses an index, I would one of the best ways to do it is use the integer i start at zero goes to size minus one and you can iterate that way or you could start at a big size minus one value and go back down to zero totally fine to go either way but sets don't have that index so we don't have that option however we can use an iterator right here so what type is an iterator let's pretend you don't know I'm going to call it I for an iterator. Now var is the generic uh, declaration and it can be any type and the type is determined by whatever's on the right side of the equals. So Java knows what type I is going to be and NetBeans is nice enough to let us replace var with explicit type and you'll see that, oh, it's an iterator. Uh, if you specify string, then it'll give you a, explicitly a string when you call next. And we're going to use this iterator in a loop. So we're going to do a while loop. I dot has next. So while there is a next string, I can't use S because I've already used it. Let's continue our just using single letters here. A equals I dot. Now, if you look next returns a string, so that gives me the element, and then I'm going to sout, and we'll just put A in here. And if you notice, there is an order that happens. It's the same as the print order, at least it looks like it. Uh, I changed it around a little bit before, I didn't notice that print seems to be the same as the iterator order. Um, you, again, you don't want to think of this as a zero element because there's not explicitly an order here. Uh, now, I did talk about there is a hash, and you can get the hash code of a string or any object with the object name dot hash code. So let's go ahead and print out the hash code. I'm using tabs in here to space this out consistently so when I run it oh sweet where did that occur okay so what happened here well I'm gonna guess the null well it's not a guess but you can't do anything to a null uh, so let's just go ahead throw out let's just not use a null I could do a try catch but I don't really care about hashing null right now all right so we see different hash codes they're not an index. This is just a number, and if you look carefully at the hash code javadoc, they'll tell you how it's computed. It's very mathy, which is neat for me, but may not be neat for you. And so it's just a bunch of the character, I believe it's the character value, the char value times a number raised to a high power, plus the next char value at position one, etc., etc. That's not necessary for us. Just know it's a value that if you call it twice on the same object, it will, if, it will always give you the same hash code on the same object. So if I call it as many times as I want on Chris, it should give me the exact same integer value right there. So if I run it again, it's not random. 6508795, 6508795. And it keeps going, can be negative. Okay, so that's how we're going to iterate through. And this is going to lead into how we're going to be able to get a random element or an element out of our set without actually knowing what elements are in the set. And there is a remove. And we'll cover that and in the next lecture. And also there is a uh, contains method. But again, for remove and contains, you're not using an index. There's no first or last element. So the only way to remove an element is to know what element is already inside of your set. 
However, we just use the inner, uh, iterator and we looked at every element in there. So we can use the iterator to get a element out of the set. And we'll show that next.